Welcome back to another tutorial. In this lesson, you'll learn how to create a custom layout and adapter for your spinner so that in addition to having text in each row, we can have an image next to some text. In this specific example, we have 50 states from the United States along with uh, their flags on their left. So that's what we'll be doing in this tutorial. The code that I have here is from the previous tutorial. Uh, it's just some basic code containing a list of state abbreviations, a spinner object, and a basic adapter. And all this does is it just displays the abbreviations. What we're going to want to do in order to have our custom layout as shown over here, where we have images alongside text, is modify this my dropdown item layout file. So this is a custom file that we created for the dropdown. And right now, all it does is it just displays some black text with a red background. We're going to modify this by creating a relative layout that contains an image view and a text view. And to speed this up, since this isn't uh, too important of a step, I'm just going to paste in this layout that I'd already created. You can go ahead and pause the video or check out the GitHub repository that where the link is in the description to just uh, speed this up. But all this does is it just creates an image view. It gives it an ID of image along with some margin. It does the same thing with the text view with an ID of text and some margin away from the image. So that's our my dropdown item.xml. And this will be describe the layout for each row in our spinner, an image and a text view. Once we have that, we can go ahead and download the flag images from Google. So if you just search up state flags download, one of the first links is from flagpedia.net. When you hit this red button over here, it downloads a zip file. So over here, um, I have this zip file called US W2560, which I got when I downloaded it from this website. Once we unzip this, it will have it will open up a folder where there are 50 images. And these are the state flag images we'll be using in our app. To add these images to our app, we're going to go over to Android Studio. And all we have to just simply do is just copy and paste all 50 of these images into the drawables folder. So I have my 50 images, I'll paste into drawables. I'll try that again, something happened. And now Android Studio is asking where I want to move it. I want to move it here, so I'll click OK. And it's adding all of these folders to Android Studio. I'll also add it to Git, that way you can download the complete project from GitHub. And now we see that we have these 50 state images located over here. The third and final step is to create our custom array adapter class that we can use for a spinner. If you remember what the array adapter does is it creates the view for each row in our spinner. So that's what it's doing. And right now, all it does, this basic array adapter, is set the text based on the abbreviations we have in our list. We want it to also display images, hence why we need to create our own array adapter or own class that extends array adapter. So come over here underneath app, there's a Java folder. Right click on the package and select new Java class. We'll call our class spinner adapter. Spinner adapter is a class that's going to extend array adapter, like I said, array adapter of type string because our uh, state abbreviations are strings. Now this is red because we have to create the constructor for our spinner adapter class. So I'll do that by saying public spinner adapter. The, it's going to, the spinner adapter is going to have two parameters. It's going to have context and it's also going to have a list of state abbreviations. So this is what we're going to pass in from our main activity to the constructor for spinner adapter, these two parameters. We're also going to have two global variables um, called context. And we'll have another, we'll have a list of states, so states list. And inside of our constructor, we'll initialize these two global variables. We'll say this.context equals context and this.states list equals states list or states. And this is still red because we have to make a call to the to the parent class, which we're extending, so the array adapter. So we can type in super and the parameters we're going to pass in to this call is context. We're going to pass in our layout for the selected item. So my selected item. And we're also going to pass in this list of states. So we have these three things over here. Now what remains is to create our actual 
to actually set the images for our view. There's we're going to write our own custom function called guest custom view. And there's a lot of typing involved. So to keep this short, I'm just going to paste this in. And once again, you can pause the video or look at the code on GitHub. I will explain what this does. So get custom view is a function that will return a view. This view will represent the view for each row in our spinner. So that means that this view will have an image and it will also have some text. So that's what this row variable is over here. That's the row that we're eventually going to return. But before we can return it, we're going to uh, have to set the text and the image for this row variable. So we'll say text view, text view, or text view states, uh, text view state equals row dot find view by ID r dot id r dot id dot text. And this text, um, this text ID is what we created over here. And or here in the my drop down item.xml, which describes the layout for each row. The text view has an ID called text. The image view has an ID called image. So that's what we're referring to over here when we say text. We're going to do the same thing for the image view. So we can say flag equals row.findView by ID r.id.img. So we have these two um, objects over here for the text view and image view. Now, what remains is just to set those two. So we'll say state dot set text. Um, one important thing that I want to note about the get custom view is if you take a look at the parameters, there's three parameters. Position is important. That tells us what position we're at in our spinner. So for example, if we we're all the way at the top with Alabama, that would be a position of zero because it's the first element in our list. So th th this is what position is referring to. And that's why when we're setting the text for our state text view, we're going to use our states list variable. So over here, we'll say state dot set text. And then we'll say states list. This is a list of states dot get position. So once again, if we're with Alabama, which is uh, which would have a, a position would be zero if the, the current position were for Alabama then statesList.getPosition would be statesList.get0, which if you look, take a look at our main activity, the first item in our list is Alabama. So that's what this is what this is doing. It's setting the abbreviation. Now setting the tech, setting the image view is going to be a little trickier because we need to set it to one of these PNGs in our drawable folder based on what the state name is. So to do this, we're going to create a resources object, resources res equals context dot get resources. And this is one of the reasons we needed this context uh, variable over here. And that's why we're passing it into our constructor because we need to get this resources variable using the context from our main activity. Then we're going to go ahead and say that the drawable name for now we have to, the drawable name will be the name of the image that we want to take. So once again, using the example of Alabama, the image that we want to display, the flag image, should also be uh, the flag image for Alabama, which would be al.png. So over here, string drawable name would be equal to states list dot get position. And this gives us the position uh, sorry, this gives us the abbreviation of our current state. But as you can see over here in mainactivity.java, all the abbreviations are in ca uh, are capitalized. So that's why we're going to use the string method to lowercase. And what this will end up looking like is something like AL for Alabama or TX for Texas and so on. Once we have this drawable name, we're going to have to get this specific image from the from the drawables folder. The way that we're going to do this is by getting the ID of that image first. So we'll say int res ID equals res, which is this resources variable dot get identifier. And then we'll pass in this drawable name as well as the drawables folder, because that's where we're getting it from. And the package would be context dot get package name. And this is a method. So we put parentheses at the end. Finally, we can get the drawable using this ID. Because now that we have this ID, 
that we're getting based on the state's name, the state's abbreviation. We're going to use that to get our drawable. So that would be res.getDrawable. And we pass in this resource ID that we now have. And now that we have this ID, uh, sorry, now that we have this drawable, we can finally set the flag image view to that drawable. So by saying set image drawable, passing in that drawable. And the last thing that we have to do is now that we've set the text over here, we said state.set text. I'll just paste it over here. And now that we've also set the image for the flag image view, the last thing we have to do is return row. And this is our complete get custom view function that takes the view for each row. It has a text view for the state, an image view for the flag, and then we're just basically setting those based on what the current state is. Now to actually see this have effect, there are two methods that we're going to have to override and use instead. So one of the methods, if you do control O, is get drop down view. And you can see by default, this is returning super dot get drop down view. We don't want it to do that. We want it to return our get custom view method that contains the image view as well for our for each row. So that's where we're going to say return get custom view. We'll pass in the position, the convert view, as well as the parent. So instead of returning the whatever it would have by default, instead it's going to return the view that we're creating. The second method that we're going to override is going to be get the get view method. And you can copy paste this over here and just change name because it's going to be the same. And this is a complete uh, spinner adapter. It has our constructor, the two overridden methods that instead of returning the default view, it's going to return our custom view, which is this method that we wrote over here. So now if we head in over to main activity, there's just one last thing we have to change and then we can run our app. We have to change this default array adapter over to our custom spinner adapter class that we just created. So spinner adapter adapter equals new spinner adapter. And we're also going to have to change the constructor. If we take a quick look at our spinner adapter class again, our spinner adapter accepts two constructors, which is the context and the list of states. So over here, I'm going to pass in get application context. And I'm also going to pass in the states list. And now I'm ready to run the app. So now the app has just launched and you can see by default, it's showing Alabama, which is the first state in our list. And you can see that um, unlike in previous tutorials, our spinner now has an image along with text inside of it. So we've successfully been able to create our custom spinner that doesn't just have text, but it also has a layout that we specified with an image view and a text view. We also created our own custom array adapter class called spinner adapter. That way we'd be able to inflate the view with the image as well as the text. And now we have an app that displays the states along with the, their flags next to them. I hope you found this tutorial useful and as always, please share the channel with friends. I plan on having upcoming tutorials on machine learning and how to apply machine learning in mobile applications. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And as always, happy developing from IJ Apps.